Discussion platform. I hope I'm right about that. Uh, we are here to discuss what is on everyone's minds, uh, the WhatsApp privacy policy and uh, how exactly it's impacting small businesses. We know that it was actually, you know, it came out in January, but even now, if you are keeping up with what's happening on Twitter and, uh, you know, media channels, we are seeing a bit of frenzy, especially after WhatsApp even cleared the air and said that, uh, well, this is not for private accounts, it's for business accounts. So we have Siddharth here today to kind of clear your, all your doubts on that. And we will talk a lot more about WhatsApp marketing strategies also that you can adopt to grow your business. Hi, Siddharth. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Chetna. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. All right. So, uh, I so originally I know a lot of you. For those of you who might be confused and was expecting Gaurav to be here, Gaurav is unfortunately unwell. So Siddharth will uh, be enlightening all of you on the uh, you know on the WhatsApp business policy and the other topics that we have in store for you today. So uh, Siddharth, could you tell us a little bit about Worloop.io? I'm sure a lot of people are already very curious to know about what it does and what do you do for the company. Sure. So, uh, Volu.io is uh, a customer support automation platform. What we mean when we say customer support automation is the fact that you know a lot of brands now, uh, while they're growing up and they're you know uh, you know focusing on a lot of marketing, a uh, lot of things. The one idea that we get missed is customer support. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks say, okay, you know, we'll just put somebody there and we'll just have them email or talk to them, right? However, today's customers are just not on email and phone, right? That's for 1990s. Right. You want to like. I mean, I mean, think about WhatsApp, right? You just want to pick up a phone and just message something if you have a problem. Mm -hmm. Say if you are, I mean, if you're expecting something from Amazon or Swiggy, like Swiggy does a brilliant feed, right? I mean, you have that uh, chat and app. You always want to like talk to them and say, hey, where's my order? Or my order is delayed. I didn't get the food. The order was delayed to the wrong person, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Yes, yes. So you, you really don't want to pick up a phone, be on a line waiting and say that, okay, your call is important to us. Please wait in the line. Or, you know, drop an email and not expect a response for the next 10 days, right? People want answers today. And now, right? They that's want it now. So um, that is a uh, Walu helps businesses do that. Uh, what we what we do is let them automate their chats across multiple platforms. WhatsApp mm -hmm. being one of them, right? We do it on Facebook. We do it on uh, web. We do it in 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 app as well. Right? Okay. So uh, and what we and uh, what we allow is what we understand is that automation is not hundred percent, right? A lot of mm -hmm. folks might want to claim that okay, no automation is hundred percent. We'll automate hundred percent of all your queries. That's not possible, right? I mean, there is a human uh, higher order thinking skill, which is empathy, right? So uh, we also give the ability to, you know, have live agents on the same dashboard. So our product can combine basically live agents as well as the bot flows. So it gives you a holistic customer support automation at scale. All right. Okay. So uh, a lot of companies might need your help, especially when it comes to dealing with uh, irritated customers uh, then and there, right? You do, the person doesn't have to manually take care of queries like this. This is one of the functionalities, yeah. if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and uh, you know, uh, on a on a personal level, what I feel, uh, you know, if you can satisfy your most irritated customers, right, they will never leave you ever, right. I mean, if you have an angry customer and you actually solve their queries instantly, right, you actually give them a solution instantly, or you give them data instantly, they are more than likely to, you know, recommend you and more than likely to stay with you for a long term. And the idea is that you know, retention is, I mean, uh, unfortunately, well, you know, uh, due to the pandemic, a lot of uh, you know, physical activity was shut down, right? Yes. Uh, you know, uh, so retention became a lot in focus, right? Mm -hmm. uh, acquisition, it's, I mean, if you have a returning customer, it is five times cheaper to sell to an existing customer than to get a new customer, Absolutely. right? And what, and what brands have always, I mean, over a period of time realized, they were getting the same person to transact by actually paying again and again for the customer, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like Chetna comes onto my web dev store, uh, checks out something, buy something, right? Now tomorrow, mm -hmm. if I'm not been able to engage Chetna enough, or if I'm not able to, you know, ensure that she's retained with my brand enough, right? Mm -hmm. uh, she, I would need to spend another, you know, another uh, say ten dollars on my ad campaign to get her back in. Absolutely, yeah, exactly, yes. Okay. So, uh, and when you know, a lot of people talk about retention, they talk about moment marketing, they talk about, you know, uh, making sure that they are always engaged. What a lot of people don't realize is that retention starts with the most important thing, which is support. Because mm -hmm. if you have, if if you offer the right support at the right time, right, yeah. folks are more than happy, right? Okay. Uh, right. I mean, you, we know so many success stories of you know a lot of brands, even niche brands, right? They have mm -hmm. grown because they have provided great support, right? You call them, 
you message them and they tell you you tell them okay the order was damaged they're like sure we'll replace it right away you will get a new order by tomorrow morning right yeah. and you're fantastically awed by it and you're like yeah great man i mean i'm i'm sticking with these guys for life Right. Exactly. I think the key is uh, timely communication uh, for your customers, and they just—they don't really care if they're talking to a bot or not. They just want to know that their queries are answered. So I think that's yeah. I, people, people have an—I uh, mean, this is human nature, right? Uh, people want a resolution. People want an answer, right? If you are asking a question, people want an answer. Right? Yes. People don't yes. want to wait. I mean, you know, the reason we are also frustrated by telcos in India, right? And we make fun of uh, we make fun of all the airtels. I mean, airtels, what a phone, PSNL, right? I'll not spare anyone. <laughs> right? Yes. Uh, the reason is that because you know when you call the customer support, they're like, hey, hold on the line. And I think airtels new initiative is really great where they're talking more and more about this, where they've you know where they've just launched a recent PVC about you know that we will get your customer support to question zero, right? We will try and get it a you know query so until we answer all your queries because at the end of the day, everyone's realizing that. Your customer wants their queries answered, their support answered instantly. If you can do that, you have that customer for life. Okay. Right? Yeah, makes perfect sense. I agree completely. And speaking of, you know, one of the I think uh, uh, biggest channels of communication is WhatsApp, and uh, uh, you have to admit there's been a lot of discussion, and I think I dare to say panic. At the WhatsApp privacy policy, and uh, it's not like after they cleared the air, people uh, businesses felt a- a- at all at ease. And a recent Financial Express article even said that 80% of them are shifting from WhatsApp to Telegram and Signal. So, uh, could you uh, you know <laughs> calm the storm and could you tell us what exactly is the WhatsApp business policy? A lot of them actually still don't know. So, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Uh, so uh, one thing is the fact that you know when they announced the business privacy policy, it is coming from Facebook, right? Uh, right? And you know, as soon as somebody mentions the word Facebook, uh, you folks, uh, I mean everyone, right, gets a little jittery when it comes to privacy and the word Facebook in one sentence, right? Because yeah. I mean, it's obviously been, I mean, the big four have obviously been in the, you know, been in the eye of the storm, privacy policy storm for a long time, right? So I'll just, uh, if I'm, uh, if if it's okay with everyone, I'll just present a small deck which basically covers. Uh, you know that question and answer that question completely. Absolutely. Sure. I'll just if you can see my screen, do let me know once you're able to see my screen. Yes, I can see your screen. I think yeah, it's very clear. All right. All right. So there are two main changes that are announced. One is the WhatsApp e-commerce. So Facebook sometime back launched something called Facebook Shops, right? Mm-hmm. And now it's bringing it to WhatsApp, right? And that's one of the changes. The second is cloud hosting for WhatsApp API. Uh, and I'll go over this very quickly, right? Sure. So the WhatsApp e-commerce features basically, it's the Facebook shop is coming to the WhatsApp platform. So mm-hmm. what it means is, as and when somebody on your WhatsApp uh, in, interacts with your Facebook shop, right? Uh, mm-hmm. They will the data about their interaction is sent to Facebook so that businesses can personalize their activity. So say for example, uh, somebody like me is looking for a pair of running shoes, right? I go to a brand's uh, WhatsApp message. And I ask them, okay, can you show me some running shoes? And they send me a catalog on WhatsApp. I maybe add a couple of quid to the cart, but I abandon the cart, right? Okay. Now this data is shared with Facebook so that tomorrow the businesses who can see, okay, this person has put it in their cart. So maybe they want to retarget me on say Instagram or Facebook and say, okay, this is what, uh, you know, maybe show me more about what content about what kind of running shoes to buy, et cetera, et cetera, mm-hmm. right? If you have not interacted with the Facebook shop, right? you will not be saying, I mean, WhatsApp will not be shedding any data. Then it doesn't apply. This doesn't apply to you. Okay. Right? Mm-hmm. So no contact for group information is shared. Right? Only your shopping activity is shared. All right. Okay. Like what you might have searched on Facebook. Yes. Yes. Okay. And now coming to the second part, which is the WhatsApp business API. Mm-hmm. Uh, for, for, the, for the longest time, WhatsApp servers, uh, would be, I mean, the WhatsApp API, your WhatsApp API account was being hosted by BSP, which is a, uh, your service provider, business service provider, mm-hmm. right? Now, similarly, Facebook is becoming one of those service providers that is telling you, we can handle the infra for you, right? So what this means is your chat data will be not, but the chat data will be stored on the Facebook, but it will not be accessible or available to Facebook for personalization, right? Okay. okay. So what it in fact means is uh, businesses will be able to use chat for their marketing purpose, but it will not be available to Facebook, 
Mm-hmm. Right. Of course. Okay. So, uh, see how this happens is generally okay. This is a personal communication data flow, right? I mean, imagine you are a WhatsApp user. I am a WhatsApp user. You and I are chatting. This is how the flow happens. Your right. message goes to a WhatsApp server and then comes to my. This is end-to-end encrypted. Yes. Right. Now, this is how a WhatsApp business API data flow happens. Now, if you're looking at a WhatsApp business, right? Mm-hmm. So, you, this is the end user on your left-hand side. This is the end user, mm-hmm. right? Then you have the WhatsApp servers where the everything happens, where you know all this data is stored. Then you have a which where we call the Volu cloud, right? Okay. You have yeah. a WhatsApp business API client. Then you have the Volu engine running, and mm-hmm. this is the backend of the company, so that you know what messages you receive, what is the logs, etc. What okay. Facebook is now offering is to take a part of this API hosting and saying that okay, now we can you can host directly WhatsApp API with us, right? They don't and then need- you yeah, so they don't need a cloud platform anymore. Then you can partner with somebody like Volu to enhance your automation, make a better chatbot, etc. Okay, all right. Mm-hmm. Now coming to privacy, right? I mean, this is a topic which is like kicked up, and everyone's like, uh, you know, there's a lot of, <laughs> lot of like you said, you know, uh, people are moving away from WhatsApp, Telegram, slash Signal, right? Uh, however, uh, if you look at the way. Uh, you know, uh, on the personal front, right? Uh, when businesses choose to host the chats themselves, right? Uh, you would see this message. Messages and calls are end-to-end encrypted. No one outside of this chat, not even WhatsApp, can read or listen to them, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and then if you're hosting with Facebook, what you'll see is this chat is the official business account of a home store. The businesses use Facebook to manage its WhatsApp conversation. Tap to learn what more about this privacy in this chat. This is the only difference. Okay. Right? WhatsApp cannot see your private messages, nor Facebook. Uh, WhatsApp does not keep a log. I mean, whenever I say WhatsApp now, I also mean Facebook. Okay. Right? Facebook does not keep a log of who's, who you're calling, who you're messaging. If they do not share your contact, you can actually set your messages to disappear. WhatsApp cannot see your location. WhatsApp groups remain private. You can still download your data. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and according to me, as well as, you know, according to Asset Wallow, these changes have a positive impact. Okay. Right? Because uh, Facebook shops is a boon for a lot of small marketers, small companies, right? Uh, you know, you have an online shop, you can actually dis- you know create a shop on Facebook and you can actually add it to a, you can add your WhatsApp number to it so people can actually message you and you yes. can personalize their experience. Right? Yes. Uh, and secondly, uh, WhatsApp business API hosting in the past was slightly painful. I will not say it, is like a, it was like a hurdle or it's like a lot of problems. But it was slightly painful because it used to take some time for you know BSP to actually create that uh, you know hosting server and put you on you know get it. Now uh, smaller businesses, it's actually easy, fast, and low cost. And smaller businesses can use the Facebook hosted services and then partner with anybody of a like you know an automation companies like uh, Volu. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, so that that clears the air a lot for me. Uh, I do have, I think, one more question. There were a few myths, right? About I don't know if they were myths. Sorry, myths, rumors, rumors about uh, you know the WhatsApp business policy, and uh, a lot of people actually wanted to know if their data would be. You now you have clarified that it's going to shuttle between WhatsApp and Facebook, right? But what about uh, uh, you know gr- uh, groups where of course i do not want anybody else to know about what's happening in the group you know the transactions and uh, you know the exchanges and confidential information right uh, can i choose as a business account to not have that shared uh, no, not shared but even accessed by facebook is that an option when i have a whatsapp business account so uh, i'll reiterate right uh, mm-hmm. when you have a whatsapp business account right that mm-hmm. information is only shared with the businesses and the end customer it is not shared with Facebook avatar, right? Facebook only when you interact with the Facebook shop, right? Yes. Will, you, will the interaction history go or the activity history go, and then you can use that data to personalize your ads across Facebook. Okay, right. all right. So, so it's only the activity. Yes. All right. Okay, there's no personal details or information of the customer or the business that's being shared. Especially, I remember reading somewhere that people were scared that customer information would now be shared on Google. And that's definitely not happening, 
those uh, doubts can be put to rest right okay <laughs> all right so uh, from this another question and i think then we can probably venture more to talking about you know uh, promoting your businesses on uh, whatsapp and uh, how whatsapp has actually emerged as despite all the you know all the business policy updates and everything whatsapp is still so popular so i uh, will venture a little more into that so as we were discussing before uh, siddharth i wanted to know a little bit about you know why don't i a new business just use a whatsapp personal account would you recommend that i use a personal account or would you recommend that i opt for a whatsapp business account or a whatsapp so, api what would you recommend so, so let's go let's go in order right i mean you have whatsapp personal okay mm -hmm. then you have whatsapp uh, business account then you have whatsapp business api right now a whatsapp personal is between you and your personal connection right a lot of folks i have seen personally as well who use them to you know uh, when they're starting off or you know you want to just showcase okay i have say you started your in house bakery or you started your in house some uh, maybe a designer art or you know boutique art shop right you want to actually sell it to your close friends or your close uh, contacts right you mm -hmm. actually use your whatsapp personal number right to set it up now a lot of times what happens is uh, you want say a, a slight automation which is like a canned reply like mm -hmm. okay this is my address if somebody asks you what is your address you want to give the answer you want to know okay what are your hours available hours how long do you take to deliver if or for example if somebody is a uh, you know an illustrator right uh, and somebody has given me and i let's say if i am an illustrator i would like my clients to know that they have to actually give me 15 days uh, notice to get a painting made or a, you know illustration done mm -hmm. right? so the responses are very small right uh, very simple and i want them to know what my availability is and i want a, you know you want a blue tick mark against the same okay that you are chatting with an actual authenticated account which adds more value to you, right? You mm -hmm. want, then you should go for a WhatsApp business account. Mm -hmm. Where does WhatsApp business API is basically for deeper integration with your existing tech stack. Uh, it is more for slightly, uh, slightly larger, I would not say large enterprises, but I would say slightly SME, uh, SMB uh, mm -hmm. folks as well, who are looking to uh, automate a lot more. So say, for example, I want to, if somebody uh, sends me a WhatsApp or my brand a WhatsApp message, I want them to talk about, okay, hey, say somebody says, hey, where's my order? I I would, as a brand, I would like them to give the entire history. Okay, this is your order. This is when it is arriving. And I want to ask them, is there any other questions? If they say, okay, can you delay my order? I want to tell them, okay, I can delay your order. And if they ask me, you know, I can ask multiple questions and I can get multiple answers. Mm -hmm. So if you want to build that kind of automation, right, you need a WhatsApp business API. All right, okay. So this is so it's literally almost in stages. I think I would I, I would uh, that's what I'm inferring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a brand, I mean, if you're I mean, if you I mean, uh, the way folks look at it, uh, it's like if you are a single person and you don't want to actually use WhatsApp a lot and you feel like okay, you know, just want to test the waters, you might mm -hmm. just want to send a couple of messages here and there just to you know, tell your close contact you're there. But if you are uh, actually getting clearly, uh, uh, you know. Uh, slightly more uh, advanced and slightly more you want them to give you a better service and you want to present, you want to be your presence known on WhatsApp, you basically get into a WhatsApp uh, business account and you want to develop as and when you want to develop deeper integrations with your existing tech tools and you want to go deep dive into automation, then you can get into it. Then you can get into a WhatsApp business API. Okay. All right. Yeah, exactly. So I think for a lot of small businesses who are confused about getting a WhatsApp business account, this is your answer. You know, you can uh, start in different stages. You, you don't have to jump into a WhatsApp business account right away. It in fact puts a lot of doubts of mine also to rest because I've always wondered if should I really opt for a WhatsApp business account? I want to know if you, this is a trivia from you that I, uh, what is the benefit actually? I mean, you have said, you already stated, you know, about canned responses and the blue tick, et cetera. Some of these I'm seeing them as benefits of uh, WhatsApp business, uh, you know, using a WhatsApp business account, right? But could you, uh, what do you think are personally some of the benefits that small businesses get from using WhatsApp business accounts? So uh, when you look at so uh, WhatsApp business API offers a verified uh, business profile, right? Uh, and if you're looking at just WhatsApp businesses, right, you can uh, look at, you know, uh, when you have a lot of multiple conversations, you want to tag them. Okay, if this is say uh, you want to give them a yellow color code, you want to give them a blue color code, you can tag them differently, right? So limited functionality is WhatsApp business account, but it helps you. What it helps you doing is it helps you create a set up a business profile, it organizes your contacts, and you can set like quick replies and away messages. So okay. you get limited functionality, but just starting off, so it's okay for you. 
All right. Okay. Uh, something else that I'm curious about, right? When you were talking about Facebook hosting, I'm quite unfamiliar with the term, and I'm sure a lot of small businesses also are. What exactly did you mean when you said, uh, you know, now with the new updated WhatsApp business policy, uh, you are also allowing Facebook to host, you know, your services? So could you elaborate a little bit more on that as well? Sure. So uh, whenever you opt for a WhatsApp business API, right, you need to host it on a server, right? They yes. will be on a particular server. I mean, you. I mean, it's not. I mean, the server is a physical place, right? I mean, we'll call it the cloud, but it is on a. I mean, there is a server for there, right? Up till now, uh, WhatsApp was offering it through the DSP, which is your uh, business service provider, right? So you had these partners across the world, and in conjunction with ISP, they were giving you a package solution, right? Mm -hmm. Now you can almost imagine Facebook to be one of these DSPs. Right? And Facebook is coming out and saying that, okay, I can host your WhatsApp business account API. So your, the way the, the place where all your WhatsApp business account API, the data is stored, the way it is managed, it will be hosted on Facebook. Okay. That's okay. what they're saying. So it's a deeper integration. It will be an easier integration. And obviously, since Facebook has a large infrastructure already, it is definitely bound to be cheaper. All right. Okay. So uh, if I am creating a WhatsApp business account, you're also suggesting that I have uh, a shop on Facebook as well. Uh, I'm not suggesting that. I'm saying if you have a shop on WhatsApp, uh, mm -hmm. if you have a shop on uh, Facebook uh, Live, right? Mm -hmm. WhatsApp business API uh, will now help you sell, I mean, reach more folks because you'll have the shop accessibility on WhatsApp. So folks okay. can, actually, can actually go to your Facebook shop page. Right, and you can actually add a number there, and when folks use that number to message you, they can yeah. act, you can actually respond to them, and they can actually browse through your catalog faster. All right, okay, that's great. And uh, this is so. This is a question that I remember uh, the marketing team was discussing some days back. Do you still think Facebook is uh, a powerful tool when it comes to you know um, uh, as powerful as WhatsApp is when it comes to you know uh, small businesses setting up shop or you know transacting or selling or communicating as well? Is because I'm assuming that's one of the reasons WhatsApp did what it did. Right. I so could you shed some more light on? I, I want to know why the business, the privacy policy even happened, and if this could be one of the reasons for it. Because is it true? Is it or am I just? Uh, is it just a rumor in the works that uh, Facebook is not as powerful as it used to be as a you know social media and uh, uh, selling platform, e-commerce platform? Sure. So uh, think of it like this, right? Every uh, uh, you know, all your audience or your customers, right? They keep evolving over a period of time. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, we are not the same, right? I mean, when Facebook was started, the audience who were there on Facebook has now is now not on Facebook, right? There yes. is a set of audience on Facebook, right? So, uh, as in when you know uh, demographics start changing, as in when you have different users using your platform, you also need to figure out different ways to engage with them, right? WhatsApp is just another way of engagement, right? Mm -hmm. And since people and you know uh, what in the case of WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp is a highly Personal communication tool, yes, right, and uh, it's 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 almost developed more like I mean you know I remember my days right going back in two thousand five and six you know we used to get these SMS packs right hundred free SMS per day two hundred free yes. SMS per day right uh, we used to get this and we were uh, very happy because we could message a lot right yeah. what that really changed that market right you don't need SMS now to communicate with them you just need an internet connection right yeah. now uh, obviously this is a channel where you can engage your audience better. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, definitely, if you want to look at it from that perspective, yes. Uh, face. I mean, WhatsApp, Facebook did what it did, but it also gives you an exciting channel for small business owners to, you know, uh, make sure that the community you have or the people you have can easily discover you. Right. People are more comfortable chatting on WhatsApp than going on Facebook and opening a messenger. Right. Yeah. So, so it's more easier for them. Right. And. At the end of the day, the goal of Facebook or the goal of any of I mean, I'll not take, I will, I'll not go to that extent of talk about Facebook, right? Uh, they have their own uh, uh, folks, but the goal, which, as for anyone, is to ensure that the if you if you are hosting something like a shop, is to ensure that they give you as many channels you can to engage and reach your customer better. What's that being one of them? Of course, all right. So, th in all uh, sense, in every sense of the word, this is probably a good decision that has happened. Right. I, I would say I would say for businesses as well as for consumers, right? No. Because I know, okay, if I'm engaging with somebody, I know why I'm engaging with them on WhatsApp. Else, I'll not engage with them on WhatsApp, mm -hmm. and they cannot send me a spammy message because they can get blacklisted. And if they get blacklisted, it's going to be a big, big blow mm -hmm. to them to recover that page. 
Okay, okay. So this this is great, and I'm glad you answered this because this brings me to my next question, uh, which is how can uh, businesses promote themselves actually through WhatsApp? Because even now, I still believe a lot of small businesses think of WhatsApp as a communication tool. If a customer has an inquiry, if a customer has a you know uh, something to address, right? They will probably uh, talk to each other on WhatsApp. That's it. They do not think of a WhatsApp as a place to sell. You know, so how exactly can businesses promote themselves better through WhatsApp? What are your uh, strategies and techniques? So uh, one of the things that you know, and uh, slightly, uh, you know, I'll go into the again. I'll go back. Uh, WhatsApp was typically, I mean, you know, think of it as it's going to be helpful for you to retain your customers, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can, if you can, you know, uh, configure your communication and you can build automation well enough, right? You can actually help with a great, you can build a great customer service through WhatsApp chat. Yeah. Right? So if you are, I mean, I mean, I'll just give an example of a bank, right? Uh, say I'm, I'm, I mean, I bank with say ABC, right? And today my uh, credit, I don't know when my credit card is due. Instead of going in, logging into the bank, I just go onto the WhatsApp and they ask me a few, uh, you know, KYC questions so that it knows I, who I am. And I just ask them, okay, you know, when is my bill due? And I say, okay, you know, bill due is in two days. And I say, okay, can I, can I defer the payment? They say, okay, let me check. Yes, you can defer the payment by 10 days. Right? Mm -hmm. I have got my answers without going to a website, without logging in, without doing any of these efforts, right? I'm getting instant answers. So one of the ways that businesses should use it is for building great customer service, right? And yes. one can also use it is for building conversations, right? And a brand uh, somehow, uh, I mean, I would take the uh, example of Nike and Decathlon. They have done this very, very well, right? They build, you know, when they when you start messaging them uh, through the channels, through different channels, they build a conversation with you. Yes. Right. So then, that's what brand should look at doing it from a WhatsApp service perspective, mm -hmm. right? Uh, when a when a customer messages you on WhatsApp, right? Mm -hmm. They help you. I mean, they give you a chance to convert with them. Don't yeah. use it to spam them. Don't use it to just throw like a slap sticker on them. Okay, take fifty percent off, take forty percent off today only. Your so customer right now is not stupid, right? I mean, you don't, I mean, they, they know when you're signing them, they know when you're not signing them. Yeah. Right? So uh, you you can you build it for great customer support. When the customer messages you, make sure you have a better conversation with them. Uh, mm -hmm. Second is WhatsApp allows you to send outbound messages as well, right? Mm -hmm. There is an option to provide outbound messages. If that message is, uh, you know, non-promotional or heavily non-promotional, right? You can actually use quick replies as well. So if somebody says uh, you want to, Say you if you're uh, if you start tracking my credit card, right? Uh, say I want to like know my credit card details. But the brand can actually ask me if I'm looking to get a loan as well because I'm asked to defer a payment, right? Yeah. So maybe I might be interested for a loan, mm -hmm. right? So they can ask me that, right? Now, given all this, this is how you would want to engage with your customers using your WhatsApp. Yes, and how exactly can brands? Because I've been at the receiving end of brands. Uh, maybe if I visit their website once. You know, or I have left some kind of contact information. Yes, mostly either my number or something. They immediately message me on uh, WhatsApp. Uh, especially, I've noticed this after you sign up, right? They immediately message you on WhatsApp. Or this is the work of. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but this is the work of a WhatsApp business API. Or uh, is is that how it works? Because like you sign up on a website and you immediately get a message on WhatsApp. Is is that how a WhatsApp business API would work? So WhatsApp business APIs allows you to send a transactional message once a transaction has happened. Right? Okay. A transaction can be you submitting a request on their WhatsApp, on their uh, website, or you know you taking uh, they taking you permission to message you through WhatsApp. Right? Mm -hmm. However, it has to be explicit in nature. Some brands try to sneak into your WhatsApp uh, direct messages by not being super clear about you know whether they are on WhatsApp or not, or whether they will message you on WhatsApp or not. But a yeah. lot of brands have taken it seriously. Right. Uh, and uh, they are very respectful. They tell you exactly when you are signing up. They tell you, okay, we will message you on WhatsApp. Please check your WhatsApp for a confirmation message from our side. Right. So, uh, I, in my head, if a brand is trying to do that, they are just inviting trouble. Right. But if they are explicitly telling you that they are going to message you on WhatsApp, and the, but they are not going to spam you, and this is just for confirmation so that they can stay connected with you, I think you would find that you. I mean. Even in your case, right? When you're talking about, you know, you get spammed by a lot of uh, WhatsApp messages. Yes. Uh, yeah. There are those twenty or thirty percent of those brands who you would you would be like, okay, they have sent me a decent message. They have sent me a message that makes actually sense, mm -hmm. right? They have not spammed me, 
right? Yes, there are folks who would fan you, but like with all other channels, right? And uh, you know, uh, you, you have the folks who are going to spam it, and there are folks who are not going to spam it, right? Uh, however, WhatsApp has a very stringent policy on that. If uh, you actually get backlisted, you cannot get that number really, very, very easily done back, right? So it kind of uh, becomes really difficult. So mm-hmm. brands generally try to not uh, spam you. Of course, all right. But I, I really like the concept of uh, brands. I mean, you don't really feel like you're talking to a bot when you're talking about, you know, uh, uh, WhatsApp business accounts or WhatsApp business APIs. Customers don't have to exactly feel like, uh, you know, like you said, you spoke about with reference to banks, right? Uh, taking care of your queries because I think nowadays people don't really care if they are talking to a bot unless they are actually addressing a huge grievance. Uh, and this is where I'm talking about Swiggy because I like their uh, user interface in such a way that initially everything is automated when they're asking you to fill in certain things. And then immediately there is, if the issue is taken out of hand, you know, th- somebody addresses you, it seems personally. Right. So does that feature exist even when you use WhatsApp in any way, when you're using WhatsApp per business or is almost everything canned or automated? So uh, when you talk about automation, it is completely with business, WhatsApp business API. Right? Okay. So you have to use WhatsApp business API when you're looking at automation. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and to answer your first question about folks not wanting to talk to humans and only, I mean, are, are OK with ha- having bots talk to them as long as it is a data driven query. Right. And when I say data driven query, when I say, okay, where's my order? What's my, when's my credit card due? Okay. What's my, uh, what, when's the, when's my flight taking off? Is my flight delayed? Is yes. my flight, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All these are data driven queries, right? Because you need to connect the data of the customer to the data of their activity and then figure it out. Right. Okay. Uh, and get the answer right. But when it involves slightly more empathetic answers, right? Yes. Somebody, uh, you know, you have a senior citizen. Who's trying to who's trying to withdraw or un, does not understand or is not able to understand what the uh, penalty for early withdrawal or something, right? I mean, say for example, in the bank, right? You need a, a empathetic uh, angle to the answer, right? So that is when you would want a human person to respond to them. Makes sense. And that makes sense. And I uh, have this very, very uh, important doubt, which is I saw that Worloop, uh, you know, had an entire guide on setting up WhatsApp business bots, right? So uh, how is it possible to give that empathetic touch to a bot? You know, I'm very curious to know that. And how does Worloop go about it? Could you please elaborate on that, uh, you know, on WhatsApp business bots? I'm sure a lot of businesses would benefit from it. Sure. So uh, it can uh, happen, but like I said, uh, 100% automation is still uh, far away, right? We are still not there yet. Right? Of uh, so then uh, when, when you're using a product like Worldloop for customer service, right, or customer support, mm-hmm. uh, the biggest uh, biggest drawback that a lot of folks see is that, you know, whether you cannot, you cannot use what, you cannot use a bot on the same platform as an agent, right? However, Worldloop, we recognize that problem and we build around that problem. So we allow humans and the bots to chat simultaneously, mm-hmm. right? So if you say, if you are a brand, say you are, uh, you're the Swiggy, right? Uh, yep. You have an automated chat flow. You have a bot that is speaking. And at the same time, there are agents available. So yes. if the bot feels that it's a query that there's not been trained for, or it's a query that they don't understand or requires empathy, right? Mm-hmm. It will transfer it to a live agent. Okay. Right. And the live agent will start chatting with you, right? So okay. it is, so it is a seamless, uh, it is a seamless handover and you actually know, the, you know I mean, uh, uh, folks know that they're now talking to a real member because the bot will say, Hey, I'll now transfer you to a fellow human or yes. you can create a message, et cetera. Yeah. Right. So, uh, and the folks know that they're chatting to a human. So they know that somebody is real is answering this question to the backend. Right? Okay. Uh, that's how, that's how we build it. Right. Uh, and answering the question, how can you become more empathetic? It's all to do with data, right? You, so if a brand is automating support, right? How, what all answers should it give based on what all scenario, right? If you have that very, if you have that uh, thought process super clear in your head, right? It is mm-hmm. super easy to automate it then. Because the heavy lifting on the technology part is done by us, mm-hmm. right? But you have to tell us, okay, what exactly you need to do. Right? Yes. And then it is very super simple. Absolutely. So we train, train it on those responses. We, the bot gets trained on those responses. Bot understands if somebody is saying that, okay, I am doing this and I need this. Uh, you can be slightly the way you communicate also, right? I mean, you can say, "Hey, where's my order? Your order number is here, and it is at, say, Pahar Ganj, right? I can just say that, 
or I can say, hey, um, thank you, Chetna, for reaching out. Uh, appreciate that you appreciate that you booked an order with us. It is on your way. Uh, right now, it is at Pahargan. It will reach you by tomorrow. Now, there is a very different way of coming. I mean, these two are very different ways of communicating, right? So again, that plays a major role in how you communicate what you want to communicate. Absolutely. And I really like that that you said that empathy also comes from the data that you have. It's almost like uh, two different uh, words, but uh, actually very important, I think, when you're building a business bot. So there are some great resources that Verloop has actually shared on their uh, website about how they build and uh, you know create these WhatsApp business bots and how it can actually help and uh, benefit your business. So do check them out. We can share the links with you in the comments. So, uh, so I think we have uh, some questions now uh, coming in from uh, people. So I think we can start taking one or two questions slowly. Um, uh, so just give me a second. I think, yeah. So we have a question, which is any plan of WhatsApp businesses to allow multi-device login and interactions using the same number? So uh, multi-device logins. Uh... Obviously, uh, through WhatsApp Business API, if you use WhatsApp Business API, you can do it. You, I mean, you partner, you have somebody like a Volukat IO that allows you to log in through multiple uh, platforms and you can see the chat happening or you can chat from anywhere, right? And not only WhatsApp, you can actually have multiple channels to chat on. So maybe you are using Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, web, and in-app. You can chat on multiple, uh, you know, channels at the same time through multiple devices. Right? Okay. Uh, but only if you use WhatsApp Business API and a provider like Volu to automate your solution. Okay. In fact, uh, to add my two cents to this, I think I saw a Twitter, uh, there was an article also, which even we uh, on Insta Mojo recently wrote, uh, where WhatsApp's introducing a bunch of new features. And one of them is the multi-device login, where uh, they, you might not even need to have your phone having an internet connection. Uh, you can just log in separately to your WhatsApp account and talk to customers. So if your phone is dead and you don't have a charger, but you have your laptop with you, you can uh, log in. And also this feature of multi-device login, I think it's in the works, if I'm not wrong. Yes. So yeah. uh, voting numbers is in the works, uh, but uh, I, I'll refrain from commenting on that. That's a WhatsApp feature. It's not a world loop feature. Right? Yeah. As and when WhatsApp brings it out, uh, world loop uh, and I mean all and all whoever we work with will have access to it, obviously. Uh, in terms of, like I said, multi-device login, uh, uh, WhatsApp as on a personal level is uh, building towards that as well as on the WhatsApp business, like I said, on the WhatsApp business API front, if you're a brand, you can use providers like Volloop and build it out, uh, build out your uh, WhatsApp solution so that you can engage with your customers through multiple devices. You don't need to log in only through a WhatsApp. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, I think we're getting a few marketing questions as well, completely marketing centric questions, which is, are groups on Facebook more powerful than pages? Okay, uh, it, it, it's up to the choice of the marketer, right? I mean, uh, if you're building a if you're building a community, uh, look at a group, right? If you're building, if you're looking at uh, making a storefront, I think it will be more better if you do for pages. I mean, that's my take. That's my personal take, right? But as and when, I mean, a lot of marketers have very different different takes on it. So it, it's a completely uh, completely business. I mean, business centric and business driven question. Of course, yes, and I'm curious to know actually what what according to you as a, a marketing professional is the ideal platform for a small business to set up an online community. I mean, now that we're talking about WhatsApp, right? WhatsApp also you can build uh, your own community. So many communities are there on WhatsApp, and this is something I was curious to discuss with you. How can I create my ideal community on WhatsApp? So how can I go about it? All right. So uh, creating community starts with one thing, right? And it's been, I mean, irrespective of the, so I'll, I'll just take a step back, irrespective of the medium that you are on, whether it's a Facebook, whether it's WhatsApp, whether it's your own website, creating community is all about delivering or giving value to your customers, either yes. through from, from the brand's end or through peer-to-peer -peer value, right? Yes. The moment you start uh, using, you start pushing a lot of uh, transactional-based uh, content on out there, right then the community collapses right and that is similar for say whatsapp right you want to build a if you want to build a community you don't want to be just there and say okay 20 percent off 30 percent off 40 percent off unless you're building a discount discount community discount code community group community right so uh if you're building any other community you want to deliver value so if you're a flight uh you know flight operator or a flight aggregator right 
mm-hmm. you want to build a whatsapp community where you talk about okay you know uh, how how you know you give uh, people the option of you know how to best to pack for same international flight how what not to take an international flight how what is the uh, what what is the experience on international trips like or say if you're flying domestic okay what is the average time that will take for you if you're in bangalore right how long will it take for you to reach bangalore to uh, mumbai door to door right people talk about flight timing but people don't talk about door to door timing right so you want to create like you know have content like this shared across so uh, say if you are a bank right how well can you organize your finances have you organized for your retirement this kind of content which is basically more adding value to the end user right and not about sales sales can be a part of it sometimes because you might want to say okay we've launched a great feature or we've launched a great card for our customers and we want to give it to you give it to you early because they are part of a whatsapp community etc those are fine but if you become salesy from the first message itself and you are always salesy then you are not creating a group or a community all right and i think the most effective way to start your own community is to first uh, join a few i think right that would also be definitely definitely you should always know what kind of you know your if you know your target audience right what are they listening to what are they interested in what are the questions that they are not able to answer if you can figure out those and you can create a community fantastic fantastic yeah actually because now that i think about it a lot of the communities that uh, you get to join on whatsapp uh, how do we even find those it's uh, because it's a mystery to me because before it used to be a lot through networking online networking yeah. events uh, you know now uh, is is it the same way or are there other ways for you to find your ideal community i mean we are speaking about setting up communities but how do i find my ideal uh, community to grow my business so so uh, if if you want i mean one of the best places that you know you find your community to build your uh, whatsapp audience is actually facebook and twitter right look at what people are talking look at where they are going look at who they are talking to just follow them right and they will and they themselves will guide you to a community that they use right uh, okay. so if you are on if, so for example if i am on twitter and i and say if uh, you know i am interested in custom support right i would yeah. follow a lot of customer support folks who are who you know who, yes. who maybe i am partnering with or who i know personally right and i will ask, ask them hey you know uh, are there any good resources for me to read or you know is there any place that i can they will direct me to that community right it's a and and they will direct you to the community which is basically highly value oriented nobody is going to direct your community which is highly sales because they also know you'll have a bad experience and you will jump out of the community right? yes yeah that i agree i agree yeah. so uh, to keep up with that now the next question i think uh, just give me a second it is how can we track conversations as an smb marketer data and analytics are really important facebook has those options but whatsapp does not yeah so uh, if you're using a uh, provider or you are using a product like worldu.io right uh, what we offer to them is uh, what we offer to any uh, brand that works with us is access to how many chats were initiated what was the most frequently used chat logs of the chat that were initiated okay uh, and you can you can have those data and this analytics with you uh, if you are just using personal whatsapp and personal and or a whatsapp business account they don't give you that data they will not whatsapp business, i mean when you look at whatsapp business api that's where you basically get all your data and analytics from okay all right okay so you are so i'm sorry i was not very clear so a whatsapp business account will still give you data but not a whatsapp personal account of course but a whatsapp business account will still give you data right whatsapp business account will not give you too much of data whatsapp okay. business api will give you all the analytics that you want to require for all right okay of course all right so that makes sense so i think when you want to track conversations like that then maybe you have to shift to a whatsapp uh, business api right before the uh, numbers okay so there you have your answer uh, so uh, an other question from the same person which is can we have automated conversations on whatsapp i think that is you what definitely you can you can definitely can all you need to do is partner with volupatio uh, <laughs> let me know i i i will personally work with you on that and we can build a great bot for you and your business right, right. Uh, okay. and uh, just uh, so that we i mean because we are working with insta mojo and i really love the work insta mojo has done anyone who signs up from this webinar or from this uh, stream right uh, i don't even know what to call this anymore right i mean the technology has evolved so much <laughs> whether we call it a live stream session or a webinar live session stream. a live stream, live stream. <laughs> yes <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, uh, whoever signs up from here, right? We have a uh, we have a special offer for them. Uh, if you're looking at using Volume.io, just message me at sid at Volume.io, right? Uh, and I will get you hosted onto our platform super quick and easy. 
That's brilliant. So I think that uh, a lot of people who are on here and who are watching this must be so happy to hear that. So that's really great because uh, I think this is something which even for me, it's it sounds technically a little challenging, but I'm sure you guys will make it so much more easier for us to understand. So, so uh, you know, I have always believed this, right? The business of a business is to stay in the business, right? You, as a, as a core of your business, right? Like if, if I'm a baker right? and I love food, so I'm, I'm taking a lot of food examples. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so if I'm a, I'm a baker, right? Uh, I would want to concentrate on baking, right? Mm -hmm. And giving the best, you know, products out there in the market, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to be too, uh, you know, uh, encumbered or too uh, involved in setting up a tech stack, in setting up my WhatsApp business API, in setting up a bot, and doing that, right? You you want to out, you want to completely outsource that because that's not the core of your business, right? Yes. It forms it it it, it forms the it forms the very uh, important part of your business, but that is not what you are specialized or what you have, what your current specifics are. Right? You want to build for your business, right? Yes. So definitely it is uh, easier for you to partner with somebody like volume.io and then basically develop your bot first so that you have a peace of mind that okay, your customer support is taken care of while you do what you're the best at and Absolutely. we do what we are the best at. Absolutely. And in my previous webinars also this is something we have discussed, you know, that it's okay to invest your uh, and this is the point and purpose of these webinars right for you to have faith in the company that you could invest in, okay. especially when it's about you know communities and you're sharing your business details and information so i think this is this is really this is pretty amazing uh and uh, so i think we have yeah one more uh, we have quite a few questions but i'll take the next one which is how can i how can i market my product or service on WhatsApp? i think there are so many but could you share your top few so uh, I would say that you know uh, if you are a, if, if you want to market your product or service on WhatsApp, uh, get into uh, WhatsApp first. Get into a WhatsApp business account, right? Uh, get a verified uh, you know uh, in terms of uh, make sure that your existing clients or your future clients know about that you are on WhatsApp, right? Uh, send them a message, talk to them, say hi and hello, etc. Right? Uh, show them the catalog, see how they respond on WhatsApp. If you feel your target audience is actually actually more receptive to your uh, messages on WhatsApp. Go for a WhatsApp business API, right? Uh, where you can build in deeper flows, where you can send outbound messages, right? And like I said, outbound messages should not be spam, right? Yes. And uh, then uh, I would say that okay, if if you are truly uh, looking at the WhatsApp ecosystem, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, from a, from that perspective, uh, get into Facebook Shop, right? And uh, move into and then move. I mean, move and use WhatsApp as a channel to disseminate that information or start payment through WhatsApp. Okay. All right. Uh, when you said uh, Facebook shop, right? And since you were, we were in the beginning of the, I was, uh, in the beginning of the webinar, we did speak about the WhatsApp privacy uh, and how, you know, it's connected to Facebook, uh, Facebook shop and posting on Facebook. So we have another question, which was also on my mind about does WhatsApp have a marketplace like Facebook? So a marketplace? No. But it does have a place where you can look at all the base service providers that can offer you such services in terms of you know promoting or in terms of developing an automation solution, right? Okay. When you look at a Facebook Facebook marketplace, it's basically Facebook. I mean, the shops is the basic marketplace of Facebook, right? WhatsApp does not have a marketplace. Okay, all right, okay. But uh, so, you're saying that there are uh, because when you were talking about some of these canned messages, right? The canned response. canned messages. So the canned yeah. response is something like auto replies, right? Uh, okay. What you have like your auto voicemail, right? So you can basically say that okay, hey, this is my address, this is my uh, this is my working hours, this is my uh, delivery hours. Give me 15 minutes. So you can uh, use that to set up some of the canned responses, but not too many of them. Okay, 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 all right. No, because I was thinking, so these are responses. These aren't like automated links that will be sent about the product. No, no, no. These are responses. Just responses. Okay. So uh, I think so. Our next question is quite interesting. I wanted to talk about that more. Uh, you know, as the, the marketing head for Volo. What do you uh, do? You have any suggestions for WhatsApp free tools that can be used for promoting uh, someone's product or service? WhatsApp free tool. WhatsApp itself is free in nature, uh, and you know, a WhatsApp business account is also free. You don't need to pay anything for it. Uh, and uh, what I would suggest is, you know, like I said, just previous to this question, right? Uh, go on to WhatsApp business account. You make get a WhatsApp business, right? Uh, and start interacting with your current customers that you have. Right. Uh, talk to them about okay, and then if you see some traction, you see people are responding positively to your messages. 
then move into whatsapp business yeah it, there is a bit of cost involved but like like with everything right a little bit of investment goes a long way in the future absolutely right? uh, you you actually can start building a lot of uh, uh, you know automated conversations as well as deeper engagement with your customer through the channel absolutely i agree with that completely so uh, so again like we went to uh, revisiting what we discussed early on in the webinar right about different stages of using whatsapp so you start off with whatsapp personal account that you do business and then business api and contact volume.io to help you out so uh, i think we have one last question that we can probably address before uh, we close the webinar and this is what can one business owner do on whatsapp to spread the word about that brand i think the one the bit about of course networking on whatsapp which is joining several communities that's one but any other uh, way that we can uh, promote our brand uh, i mean spread the word is of course promote on whatsapp so uh, as a brand you already have some loyal customers right and i keep coming back to loyal customers because uh, the cost the cost of acquiring a new customer is five times more than retaining an existing customer right so uh, when you when you're looking at whatsapp right you would want to engage with your current obviously loyal customers and you can also run some referral campaigns and you can tell them hey you know if uh, you know you help spread the word refer an on kind uh, referral campaign uh, that will help you get more brand awareness second you provide value to the users right i mean if i am a say if i if uh, uh, i am a i'll take a physiotherapy shop right i mean which is the furthest example you can get from an e-commerce store right yeah. because e-commerce has plenty of options like i'll talk about the now if somebody can uh, uh, you know i maybe i have a uh l4 l5 uh, slip disc herniation right mm -hmm. uh and maybe uh, i'm going to a physiotherapy for for my regular physio, physio sessions right uh if the brand can actually engage me on whatsapp and send me more tips and tricks on you know how to take care of your back on a daily basis what all stresses you need to do what all you need to create i am already creating heavy awareness because i can actually forward those messages to my friend and ask them to follow this particular whatsapp uh, number or engage with them and just send them a hi so that they'll start sending them the same messages Right. True, true. I agree, and I think uh, for a lot of people, that's something that I mean. I'm assuming with a loyal existing customer, you that particular customer will spread the word themselves about your brand to several potential new customers. So I think that's yeah, that's one of the best ways to make sure uh, uh, you know you are promoting your brand on WhatsApp. Uh, I think I'm so I'm getting one more. I think uh, last uh, yeah, are there bots like Telegram on WhatsApp? So you were talking about business bots, right? So are there bots yeah. like once you get on Telegram on WhatsApp? So uh, now with you know with all the shift happening and uh, you know a lot of uh, brands saying that you know we are moving away from uh, WhatsApp, uh, I I don't actually uh, feel the fact that you know WhatsApp is actually going to move away from uh, say uh, the user base is going to move away, right? Yeah. Uh, because this is a knee jerk reaction that I've seen. Right, because WhatsApp is encrypting your end-to-end -end data, right? And a lot of people, while Instagram, Telegram, and uh, Signal have seen a high jump, what I feel is the fact that you know people will be available on more platforms, messaging platforms, than only on WhatsApp. While WhatsApp had a monopoly, and you know the privacy policy also uh, scared a lot of folks and pushed them onto different channels. Telegram and Signal have picked up. Signal, as of now, doesn't have API. Telegram does, and you mm -hmm. can definitely build a bot from there. Absolutely. So you are not exactly staying so loyal to WhatsApp as such. You are encouraging other small businesses to consider. It's okay if they do consider shifting to Signal or Telegram if they are new to this. But those who are existing on WhatsApp. So I would, I would, I would say that be where your customers are, right? Yeah. <laughs> be where your customers sense. are. Right? I mean, if 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 you if you feel your customers are on WhatsApp, uh, be on WhatsApp. Uh, right now, WhatsApp does have the highest number of Indian users. 300 to 400 million if i'm not wrong the number is the number right uh if my memory serves me right uh, we do have 300 to 400 million folks on whatsapp right yes. uh yes. you would find most of india on whatsapp right and uh this is anecdotal and i am not quoting this from any data point this is very anecdotal all the folks who had shifted the conversation to signal and telegram are now back onto whatsapp right <laughs> and i okay. think the same as, ha as same has happened with a lot of my other uh friends and acquaintances as well so I know for a fact that you know folks who are like get and WhatsApp has done a good job in communicating the privacy policy changes across. Yeah. Right? It's not done a very brilliant job. Like you know, people are still a little bit apprehensive. Oh, you know, even my mom was apprehensive. Right? Uh, she's like, okay. Uh, she asked me, you know, uh, uh, do I need to switch to some other app? Do you want to open the other app? And I 
and i told her like you know okay i'm in this business and i'm telling you for a fact that you know nothing is nothing yeah. is ever going to get compromised to what happens yes absolutely so i think just like uh, her a lot of us are now reassured about uh, either getting back to whatsapp or never having to leave uh, at least those businesses <laughs> that uh, you know have a solid uh, community and that are already networking on whatsapp selling on whatsapp transacting on whatsapp there isn't anything to worry about actually i wanted to know even transactions are safe right on whatsapp super safe like i i have used it uh, i think uh, from the time they launched i was one of the beta folks that they launched i mean i was mm-hmm. lucky enough to be a part of the beta program where you know i got access to whatsapp pay and it's oh, okay. super super safe it's super safe it's built on top of uh, you know very heavily encrypted network right so it, i mean it is it is never going to compromise right mm-hmm. i i mean so uh, the entire privacy policy around facebook knowing your data and all nothing is nothing of that sort is going to happen okay that's great so i think that brings us to the end of our webinar uh, because i think uh, uh, for those of you who still have questions uh, we are live across three platforms uh, but you can direct your questions on any of these platforms and uh, siddharth has also shared his email with you uh, there are people asking for uh, email id and uh, uh, you know uh, so, so uh, it is it is sid sid at worldloop.io right uh or you can just go to worldloop.io drop us a message on our chat bot or drop us a message on you know our website form uh i will personally get in touch with you and i will help you uh, you know get to wherever you want to get through to the whatsapp bot or uh, any any uh, channel bot uh i will help you so i promise to any any uh, brand is that we will help you automate your customer support and until we do we will not rest <laughs> wonderful uh, there is one last question which is actually directed to insta mojo uh, about do we have any kind of integration with whatsapp and we actually do if uh, you do visit our website you will uh, you can uh, sign up on our website and have access to the premium online store once you sign up to the premium online store you will be allowed to chat with your customers on uh, using whatsapp as well this is a brand new feature that's in the works and also you have uh, you can uh, set up payments on uh, in uh, uh, on whatsapp with uh, using insta mojo too so we have quite a few uh, data resources and you know reading material on that so please do visit worldloop.io to know more about whatsapp business api and you know how that integ- uh, integration works and do visit insta mojo to know more about paying and using payment insta mojo payments uh, and uh, the premium online store on whatsapp uh, and i think someone has shared it's sid it's sid at worldloop.io uh, right io yes sid sid at worldloop.io yeah yes. so, uh, swati it's not in it's dot io so i hope you get that correct we will share the uh, email id once again from insta mojo don't worry uh, thank you so much that for joining us today definitely clear thank the you so much. <laughs> thank you so much i love this discussion Yes absolutely and i wish it could go on for longer because i have so many more questions about whatsapp marketing but maybe we can uh, you know do another live streaming session in the future about that definitely definitely would love to all right thank you guys for joining in if you have more queries or questions please do visit the website uh, worldloop.io or instamojo.com or you can leave your comments here thank you so much have a great day thank you folks thank you for listening in bye bye